dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is the fourth Sunday of the Lent. And in order to guide us for our reading and also to know more about our readings spiritually and meditatively, we have, as usual, uh, Reverend Father Alvin Peter Fernando. We would like to welcome Reverend Father Alvin Peter Fernando warmly, uh, Father. Thank you. Thanks for uh, joining us. And uh, Father, for the fourth Sunday of the Lent, the readings are very, very important. Uh, and some of them sound a little bit enigmatic also. So I like to have a summary, uh, a thematic summary about these uh, yes. readings, Father. So before we enter into the readings, today is also a special day because already we are halfway through Lent. Mm -hmm. And this Lent is called, uh, Sunday is called Letere Domenica, Rejoice Sunday. Like in Advent season, we have the third week as Gaudete Domenica. Because the entrance antiphon to the Mass says, Rejoice Jerusalem. So it's also a reminder that uh, we are not only in the season of repentance, but we are also coming closer to the season of joy. So when purple and white are mixed, it becomes <coughs> pink. So that's why today the vestments would be pink in color. That is to say, we are still continuing with the season of repentance, but with the hope of celebrating the great Paschal mysteries. So today the readings tell us uh, the same thing. Rejoice because God loves you. Rejoice because God loves me. And that is the contents of the readings of today. Very good. In fact, God cannot not love us. Yes. Yeah. Uh, like St. Thomas, uh, Thomas Aquinas would say, there is one thing actually God cannot do, that is he cannot stop loving mm -hmm. us. Yeah. So with that uh, understanding, uh, let us turn to the first reading. It is from the second book of Chronicles. In those days, all the princes of Judah, the priests and the people added infidelity to infidelity, practicing all the abominations of the nations and polluting the Lord's temple, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. Early and often did the Lord, the God of their fathers, send his messengers to them. For he had compassion on his people and his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God despise his warnings and scoff at his prophets until the anger of the Lord against his people was so inflamed that there was no remedy. Their enemies burnt the house of God tore down the walls of Jerusalem, set all its palaces afire, and destroy all its precious objects. Those who escaped the sword were carried captive to Babylon, where they became servants of the king of the Chaldeans and his sons until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. All this was to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, until the land has retrieved its last Shabbats during 
all the time it lies waste, it shall have rest while seventy years are fulfilled. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom, both by word of mouth and in writing. Thus says Cyrus, King of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth, the Lord, the God of heaven has given to me, and he has also charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever therefore among you belongs to any part of his people, let him go up and may his God be with him. This is a turning point in the history of Jewish people, yes. uh, right, Father? Yeah. Therefore, it's also important for us. Uh, how would you assess the importance of this uh, first reading, Father? So, Book of Chronicles, they are not yeah. uh, very common among us. Yeah. But uh, it, they were written a couple of centuries before the, the birth of Jesus. And it is a reconstruction or a theological reconstruction of the history of salvation. And today's reading carries a good summary of the history of salvation. And we need to rejoice because God loves us. How does God love us? That is what is given in the whole uh, reading. See, the, those days, it's the princes, the kings, the priests, the people, all of them sinned. And what did God do? He did not reject them. He loved them so much that he sent his messengers to them. But even the messengers, they rejected and what did God do? He didn't reject them. He allowed his house to be destroyed, his uh, city to be destroyed, the holy city to be destroyed, and all the holy things that were used in the temple to be carried away and to allow his people to be in Babylon. Babylon. And for what? So that they will come back to him. That is what God loved. But nothing happened. For 70 years they were there. And when they repented, when they came back, God chooses not another Jew, but a non-Jew, a pagan king, King Cyrus, king of Persia, to <laughs> give freedom to the people to come back and reconstruct their own country. And that is how God loves us. He never gives up. See, as human beings, we are in a hurry. Somebody does something wrong, punish the person. And especially in the Catholic Church, that is why we don't allow the capital punishment. Because when the capital punishment is given, the person has no way of coming back. And that's why the church says, no, we give chance. That is why the church is involved in the prison ministry. Though they are condemned, there is a room for them to be repentant and to experience God's love. And therefore, God has marvelous ways of coming after us. And many people, the, there are many lay people who are involved in these prayer groups and so on. If we speak to them, they will bear witness to that. We were nowhere near God, but God brought us closer to us. That's why they are so vibrant. They want to tell the whole world about God's love. So God's ways are marvelous. God loves us. Therefore, we need to rejoice. And also, see, if we take the statistics in Sri Lanka, suicide is, uh, for up to recent time, we were leading. But if you take the statistics and see, the Christians are very few. Why? Because the Christians know 
even when everyone leaves us, God is still there to love us. Because of that conviction, people don't uh, harm themselves. And uh, that is the truth. So we have to rejoice because God loves us. Human beings may not understand us. They may misunderstand us. They may accuse us of anything. But if we are convinced that God loves us, we will always rejoice. That's why Christians are called Alleluia people. Even amidst all suffering, we can rejoice because there is resurrection. That is the Paschal mystery. We have suffering, we have death, but with the hope of resurrection. resurrection. It's very important because actually God knows, I think, Father, that we are fragile, vulnerable. Therefore, we need, we need one another. Also, we need God. So, since God understands our predicament perfectly well, He could also love us perfectly, absolutely, and also He could forgive us because He knows, He understands our situation absolutely, uh, with absolute uh, knowledge, conviction. So, that is, I think, part of the good news also. On our part, we should never give up hope. We should never come to a quick solutions or conclusion about life. That's the end of it. There is no God. There is no hope uh, for life. Therefore, we must end our lives, etc. So, in fact, although this reading, uh, you know, for some people can be very uh, depressive, very uh, kind of, uh, you know, not a reading of hope, but its deeper meaning, as Father mentioned, is a message of hope, message of a, a brighter future for humanity. Uh, in fact, he can make use of anyone, you know, as, as you mentioned, Father, the king of uh, King Cyrus of Persia, Persia is today the Iran, Iran. Iran. Uh, he can make use of anyone, anybody, any person for his purpose. Therefore, we should remain hopeful and be open to the surprises coming from God. So with that uh, guidance, with that understanding, I think now it's uh, proper time to turn to the second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, God who is rich in mercy, because of the great love he had for us, even when we were dead, in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Raise us up with him and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus for by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from you. It is the gift of God. It is not from works, so no one may boast. For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance that we should live in him. I think it's like actually, Father, summary of the first reading, if you carefully, yes. uh, patiently uh, yeah. analyze it. Yeah. In the first yeah. reading, it's what happened in the history. Yeah. In the second reading, yeah. it's what happened to me personally. Because in the first reading, historically, these things happened in history in certain places. Here, in individual person's life. 
where he says, Paul is very clearly saying, see, we were dead for sins and God gave us life out of his mercy and love. And he brought us life in with Christ. And it is not because of our work. That is an important thing. Uh, it is out of his sheer grace. It's no, totally a gift of God. See, we are Christians not because we chose. Even those people who are converted to Christianity, it's not they who wanted to. It's God who inspired in them to come to faith. So it's a total gift. It's not for what I do. And everything in life is a total gift. So if we carefully note the time we are born in, the parents we have, the families that we have, the language we speak, the culture, the country in which we live, none of these things we chose. It's all given to us out of sheer mm -hmm. grace. It's all gift of God. And God had a purpose in that, so that we will live in God. So that is what is important. So that we will live in God. That's why we need to rejoice because none of these things we earned. And we need not be sorry about all these things. Many people are trying to migrate and go, but still for all, you can't uh, blame God for it. This is a beautiful country. And when they go abroad only, they will know the beauty of this country. And. Uh, that is why we need to be grateful to God. We need to rejoice. Though there are problems, difficulties, God still loves us. And therefore, we need to rejoice. So Paul gives a very beautiful form here. We are his handiwork, his handwork. And created in Christ Jesus for good works that God has prepared in advance. So that's why we need to rejoice. None of us accidents. We were all sent into this world at this particular time to this particular country and family and society with a purpose to do good in the name of God. And if we concentrate on that, our lives will be joyful because we are not sure why we are here. We are not convinced that God loves us. That is why we are all the time crying. But in our little ways, there are many things that are happening through us and God is carrying forward his uh, plan of salvation. And that if we are convinced of that, we will rejoice. And most of the things that each one of us do, it's not the same thing another person cannot do. What we do is unique. Maybe to our family, to the place where we live, all those places, what we do, whether we are saints or sinners, that's a different matter. What happens through us, no one can replace. So that is the uniqueness of God. That's why today's readings invite us to rejoice because it's out of grace God has done all these things in our lives. How to maintain in our day-to-day -day life this understanding, this truth about God. Yeah. So here, Paul, that yeah. is what he says. We are created mm -hmm. in Christ Jesus for the good works. So what Jesus does, we need to do in our day-to-day -day living. We have received everything out of grace, but then we are accountable, we are responsible, we cannot just idle and uh, lose all those graces. To keep on, that's why once again the prayer comes, the journey with God comes, listening to the word of God, all these will help us to move forward in the ways God has prepared. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. 
and this is the verdict that the light came into the world but people preferred darkness to light because their works were evil for everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light so that his works might not be exposed but whoever lives the truth comes to the light so that his works may be clearly seen as done in god it's like a, a very good summary of the whole uh, biblical revelation for the yes. way you know one of the most quoted passages also in the yes. bible Yeah. So okay. here Nicodemus, yeah. a well-versed person in yeah. the scriptures, yeah. he comes and we, Jesus quotes from Numbers chapter 21. Mm -hmm. And once again, it's a sheer grace, a gift from God. In the wilderness, we know when those serpents were biting the people and they were so painfully dying and so on, God tells Moses, lift up a bronze serpent in the desert. And whoever got bitten and looked at it, they were saved. And here Jesus is lifted up and he becomes life-giving. And also we have a wrong understanding of eternal life. Now eternal life is not a life that we receive after our death. According to the John 9 uh, theology, the eternal life begins with our faith in Jesus. And that journey with Jesus never comes to an end with death. It continues forever. So eternal life is, once I know Jesus, I accept Jesus, I walk with Jesus, it begins here on earth and it goes on. So that's why uh, John tells us, God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in my, him might not perish, but have eternal life. That relationship goes on. And Jesus came not to condemn the world. Now this is a very good opportunity for us to think. As Christians, we are not a people to condemn. We are a people to forgive. We are a people to guide one another and not to condemn. See, sins can happen. That's why judgment does not belong to us human beings. We do not know the background when we judge. But God is the only judge. Our work is to forgive, not to condemn. But that the world might be saved through Jesus, he came here. So therefore, uh, whoever believes in Jesus will not be condemned by, Jesus, uh, by God. Because that is what Jesus came to save all of us so that whoever believes, he will be there. So who will uh, reject Jesus? Only those people who are in the dark, who don't want to come to light, who don't want to follow Jesus. They are the ones who will be condemned as such. Not God condemns, they themselves have condemned themselves. And therefore, this is a beautiful reading where Jesus came because of the love of the Father to save us, not to condemn us. Therefore, let us rejoice. That is the important thing for us to know. Also, the point you mentioned, I think it's very important. Father, most people think in order to experience the eternal life, we have to wait until we die. And also, actually, uh, what you said is true. Uh, Eternal life is not the prolongation of time, you know. Yes. You are going to live millions and millions of years instead of uh, 60, 70 years, you know. It's something much more deeper and much more profound than that. Yeah. As you said, you know, uh, it's, you begin to live your eternal life in faith, in yeah. Christ. In simple so, terms, yeah. it is my relationship to Christ. Christ. That is eternal life. And nothing can stop it. Nothing can stop. Not I even death. Uh, because uh, even beyond death, when we are resurrected, we are going to be in relationship, relationship with, with Christ. Christ. Uh, yeah. So I think that that can be a marvelous and a, a beautiful, the most beautiful experience in life. Actually, yes. the most meaningful experience in life. Because all our relationships yeah. on earth will yeah. come to an end with the death. Yeah. 
but not the relationship it, with yeah, it's Christ and the heavenly beings. It yeah, goes if on. you actually think about it, it's something mind-blowing. Yes. You know, also fantastic. That's right. Also very life-giving and also very uh, hope-generating. Then you are not afraid of your future, no matter what is going to happen. The, these things become, you know, nothing to you, you know, because yeah. of this deep, deep uh, uh, connection with, yeah. And uh, yeah. we have this famous author, Scott Hahn, Hahn. who is a convert. Yes. Now, he got converted after attending a mass. Mm -hmm. And he says in his book, uh, Rome Sweet Home, mm -hmm. there he says, the greatest miracle take place in the Catholic mm -hmm. Church at the mass, mm -hmm. where the whole heavenly court is there. Yeah. And that is the heavenly experience we have. And at the same note, he says, unfortunately, the greatest sin also take place in the Catholic Church because the Catholics don't realize it. Realize. Absolutely. <laughs> so, we yeah, take it for granted. Take it for we, granted. You know, we don't uh, experience yeah. the value of it, see the deeper meaning of it. It's so unfortunate, actually. Also, another thing about the judgment you mentioned, I think, Mother Teresa said once, you know, when you, when you uh, start judging, you stop loving. Yes. Yeah. I think it's very, very, very true because you have no time to now uh, love. You are busy judging the yes. person and then passing, uh, you know, uh, judgment on that the person. Matter. Yeah. So that's why here it's very clearly that that's not the job of Christ. He no. didn't come for that. No. Yeah. He had a greater and a much more nobler uh, mission here on earth. Yeah. So I think we also need to uh, realize it, understand it, and then get busy with serving and loving people uh, so that I think it will help people to uh, change themselves, undergo transformation, and also the conversion, the repentance. Yeah. Ultimate is love that will transform lives, love that will heal us and all our inner, inner wounds and the brokenness, etc. So that is the heart of the message here. God has given us everything for our salvation, as if he has nothing else to give now. Yes. Everything for our uh, benefit, for our growth. So therefore, I think we have no right to uh, complain about anything in life. In life. life. Yeah. Yes, we have to rejoice because God loves yeah. and he has given that love Every to all of us. Yeah, so let's enter into that deep experience uh, starting from this moment. Yeah, so uh, uh, again, we like to thank uh, Reverend Father Alvin Peter Fernando for guiding us, giving us those valuable uh, meditative insights in our Dawar uh, discussion. Uh, thank you, Father. Uh, thank you very thank much. You. Uh, may God bless you. May God bless you. And also, we believe and then we pray uh, that you will also continue to get nourishment from this reading. And before we end, Father, uh, I want you to guide us into a prayer. God, our loving Father, since you love us so much, you love each and every one of us, help us to rejoice in life. Help us to realize that through your Son, you have created us to do good works as your Son, Jesus Christ. Send your Holy Spirit upon us so that we may firmly believe and experience the love you have for each and every one of us. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you. God bless. May God bless you all. Amen.